Welcome to That's Easy, the video tutorial series that helps you use Watlo Easy Zone products. In this installment, you will learn how to run Easy Zone Configurator, establish communications, navigate the online editor, configure closed loop control with an integrated limit, configure an alarm with an output, perform an auto tune, and save the controller's settings on your PC. In this session, we use the EasyZone Configurator software on a laptop computer. The laptop is connected to an EasyZone PM controller with a USB to 485 converter. The converter has been installed as a serial port named COM6. The EasyZone PM controller is configured to communicate via the standard bus communications protocol, and its standard bus address or zone number is 4. The PM controller includes a control loop and an integrated limit. We are going to use EasyZone Configurator to set up the controller for an application that includes two Type J thermocouples, one for temperature control and a second for the safety limit. The application will use three outputs, one to drive a heater, a second that notifies the operator when the temperature is higher than desired, and the limit output which cuts power to the heater when there's an over temperature condition. When you launch EasyZone Configurator, you see the welcome screen. To configure an EasyZone controller that is connected to your computer, choose Configure a device while communicating with it and click Next. If you know to which communications port the controller you want to configure is connected, choose Use and choose the communications port. If you're not sure, you can choose Try Them All. Click Next and the configurator looks for easy zone controllers. If no controllers are found, make sure the communications wiring is correct. The controller has power. The COM port the controllers are connected to is really available and not being used by another program. Also check the range of addresses that are being scanned on the advanced communications dialog. and then click repeat scan to try finding the controller again. When EasyZone Configurator finds devices it lists them by communications port and zone number and indicates the name, model, and serial number of each. Since only one PM controller is connected it's already selected and you can click Next to go on. EasyZone Configurator opens the Edit Device Settings window and reads the pages and menus from the PM controller. The top of the window lists the controller's model number and general instructions for what you can do. The Parameter Menus list lets you examine and work with any of the controller's menus. These are the same pages and menus as appear on the controller's built-in display, a remote user interface, and in the user manual. Click a menu to select it. The Parameters window lists the names and values of each of the parameters on the selected menu. The Parameter Help window displays help for the currently selected parameters. The first set of parameters allows you to name the controller and choose the temperature units. It also displays the controller's firmware version. Click Next to go to the next menu. On the Analog Input 1 menu, set the controller for the sensor you have connected to it. In this application, we're using a Type J thermocouple, so no changes are needed. Click Next again, or click Analog Input 2 to set up the controller's second sensor. Again, the default values work for this application, so we can move on. The controller has two digital inputs, but I'm not using them yet, so I'll skip configuring them and go right to the limit. By default, the limit will trip outside the high and low settings, but I just want to monitor for a temperature that's too high, so I change the limit side setting from both to high. 
Note the set point high limit and set point low limit parameters on the setup limit menu set the range of values the controller will accept for the limit set points and are not the limit set points themselves. We'll set the limit set points in a few minutes. Next let's look at the control loop settings. These are all fine for my application. Now let's consider the outputs. We're going to use output 1 to drive the heater for the control loop so the default output function setting heat is good. Output 2's default function is as an output for an alarm and the output function instance is already set to 1 so this output is tied to alarm 1. Output 3 is off. Output 4 is the limit output. To get alarm 1 to turn on output 1 when the temperature goes over the high alarm set point, for alarm type choose process alarm. The alarm is supposed to monitor the same analog input that's used for the control loop, analog input 1. That input is selected here with the alarm source and alarm source instance settings. Alarm logic determines how an output associated with this alarm will behave. With the default setting close on alarm, the output is off or open when there is no alarm and turns on or closes when there is an alarm. If you want it to work the other way around, change alarm logic to open on alarm. To have an alarm when the temperature is too high, but not when it's too low, change the alarm sides from both to high. To have the alarm stay on until the operator notices it, set alarm latching to latching. To allow the operator to turn off the alarm output after noticing it, set alarm silencing to on. So the operator can use the EZ button on the front of the controller to silence the alarm, Set the function key's action function to silence alarms. That's all we need to do on the setup page. Now let's set the initial operating settings. Click the minus sign next to the setup page to hide the setup menus and bring the operations menus into view. On the operations page analog input 1 menu, you can see the temperature measured by the first thermocouple. Keep in mind that EasyZone Configurator is for controller configuration and is not HMI or SCADA software. These values update every five seconds or so. On the Limit 1 menu, I'll set the Limit High set point to 275. Above that, the limit will shut off the power to the heater. On the Monitor 1 menu, you can see what the control loop is doing, which isn't much since we haven't set the set point yet. On the control loop 1 menu, you can set the set point. Before changing it, consider if it's safe to increase the temperature. Actually, at this point, we can't because the controller is indicating a high limit alarm. That's been there all along because the default setting for the high limit is zero, and even though we've set the high limit to 275, the limit latches and it does not reset by itself. Clear the limit alarm by pressing the reset or infinity key on the front panel. Now that the limit is reset, I can set the set point to 200 and start the controller's auto-tune. This will tune the controller for the heater and load. The controller display flashes tune, and the auto-tune setting remains yes while the controller is performing the auto-tune. The amount of time tuning takes depends on how fast the heater and load can heat up and cool down. Wait and allow the auto-tune to complete before proceeding. Now that tuning is completed, I'll set the high process alarm set point to 250. There are many other settings in this controller, but we've set everything necessary for this application. Other parameters can be used for ramp and soak profiling, customizing and locking out the controller menus, calibrating the controller, and many other features. The last thing to do is save the settings. 
You don't have to do this. The controller will remember the settings. But just in case someone mistakenly changes a setting later, you may want an easy way to get back to a known good state. On the Diagnostics 1 menu, let's save the settings as User Set 1. You also may want to save the settings on the computer so that next time you set up a controller for this application, you can just download the settings instead of having to set each one again. It saves time and it's more accurate that way. Click Finish and select one of the options that includes saving the settings. Click Finish again. Enter a name and a comment that will help you remember what the settings are used for. You can save configuration files anywhere you like, but by default they are saved in the Saved Configurations folder in the EasyZone Configurator program directory. EasyZone Configurator reads up all the settings from the controller and then saves them in the file. This can take a while since there are a lot of parameters. We hope you found this installment of That's Easy helpful. We'll explore additional topics in other installments.